Have you ever wondered how one of the most powerful figures in history, Marcus Aurelius, managed to navigate the complexities of his role without succumbing to the excesses of power? Today, we unravel the wisdom of this ancient Roman emperor, exploring how his stoic philosophy can guide us in prioritizing what truly matters in the midst of life's challenges. Join us on this journey as we decode the art of caring less about things that aren't worth our energy. But first, let's delve into the intriguing life of Marcus Aurelius. Born into an era where power and opulence went hand in hand, Marcus Aurelius stands out as a beacon of virtue in the annals of history. The question remains, how did he resist the allure of excesses that often accompany positions of immense authority? As we explore the pages of his life, we find a man who actively chose a different path, a path guided by the principles of Stoicism. In a world where emperors revealed in the luxuries of their positions, Marcus, with unwavering conviction, embraced a life of self-discipline. But what led him to deliberately abstain from the grandeur and indulgence that power offered? The answer lies in his profound belief that his role as emperor was not merely a consequence of chance, but a destiny bestowed by fate. For him, it was a calling to make a positive impact, a responsibility to shape the world around him with a sense of purpose. As we embark on this exploration, we'll delve into the very fabric of Stoic philosophy that guided Marcus Aurelius. The core tenets, such as discerning what is within our control and what isn't, played a pivotal role in shaping his worldview. And as we unravel these timeless principles, we'll decipher how they offer not only a guide for understanding our limited influence on external events, but also a key to maintaining composure amid the chaos of life. In times of hardship, when the weight of stress feels overwhelming, join us on this enlightening journey through Marcus Aurelius's wisdom. Discover how his teachings transcend time, offering valuable insights for navigating the present, reflecting on the past, and approaching the future with tranquility. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Your contribution may resonate with someone facing a similar situation. Now let's embark on this transformative journey together. Number one, the future. Seneca wisely noted, we suffer more in our imagination than in reality, suggesting that our thoughts can be a bigger source of our troubles. When we think about the future, our imagination tends to exaggerate, coming up with countless scenarios that are unlikely to happen. Beforehand, we worry about how to handle possible outcomes and feel anxious about not knowing how the future will unfold. Interestingly, sometimes what we fear actually occurs, just as we had imagined. Life often brings unexpected twists that catch us off guard. Imagine meticulously planning for a dream vacation to a tropical paradise, saving money, making arrangements, and eagerly anticipating the relaxation ahead. But as fate would have it, a sudden and severe storm hits, forcing you to cancel your trip. Despite your thorough preparations, an unforeseen event turns your excitement into disappointment, leaving you with unexpected challenges to navigate Life has a knack for throwing unexpected curveballs our way, altering our plans in ways we could never have predicted. Many people constantly worry about what might happen in the future, both the good and the bad possibilities. What if I fail my exams and ruin my future? Or what if I never find true love and end up alone? These are the kind of worries that often occupy our minds, creating anxiety about potential negative outcomes. But the thing is, they're not happening right now. They only exist in our thoughts. The future becomes a source of stress because we keep dwelling on it, even though it doesn't really exist outside of our minds. Marcus Aurelius once said, 
It is not the weight of the future or the past that is pressing upon you, but ever that of the present alone. The worries about what might happen in the future are happening right here, right now. If we focus too much on what might happen later on, it can make our lives difficult as we start to imagine and suffer through those future events, letting them control our current moments. Now, let's explore Marcus Aurelius's perspective on fretting about the future. Take a look at this quote. Never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to, with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. In simpler terms, he's advising us to use the same logical thinking that helps us deal with today's challenges when facing tomorrow's uncertainties. He reminded himself not to dwell on all the dreadful possibilities that could unfold, but to focus on the current situation. By concentrating on the present, he discovered he could endure it. If handling today is within our capabilities, why doubt our ability to navigate what lies ahead? This mindset aligns with the concept of amor fati, the love of fate, coupled with the confidence that we possess the resilience to overcome future obstacles. In conclusion, Marcus Aurelius encourages us to face the future, armed with the rationality that guides us through the present. By avoiding excessive worry and embracing the challenges of each moment, we not only cultivate a love for our destiny, but also trust in our ability to conquer whatever comes our way. Number two, the past. Life moves fast, and we can't do much about what's already happened or what's still to come. Remember, we live in the present, in this short moment. Everything else is either done and dusted or yet to happen. Instead of getting caught up in what's gone or what might be, let's appreciate the here and now where we have the chance to shape our lives. Sometimes our memories of the past get mixed up and it's hard to confirm what really happened. We depend on our own memories and how others saw things. So not only is the past something we can't change, but our memories of it are probably not entirely accurate. Still, we often think a lot about past events, reliving the feelings of pain they brought. Some think that by dwelling on the past, we can somehow control it, but that's just a trick our minds play on us. Yesterday is done, and we can't rewrite it. The only strings we can pull now are in our heads, thinking about things that are already out the door. Many people wish they could have done things differently. But let's be real, that's like wishing for a miracle. Getting caught up in those thoughts is like chasing a rainbow. Nice, but not gonna happen. Marcus Aurelius didn't waste time on past events. Instead, he focused on how he reacted to them. The past is set in stone, we can't flip the script on it. Most likely, we couldn't have dodged those past happenings even if we tried in the moment. What we do have control over is how we approach these events now. At the start, we might see the past as a bit of a tough ride. Perhaps we faced hurdles in our early years, watched as some close friendships faded away, or had a business idea that hit a rough patch. In life, it's not so much about what happens to us, but how we deal with it, as Marcus Aurelius once pointed out. He stated in his meditations, you say, it's unfortunate that this has happened to me. No, it's fortunate that this has happened and I've remained unharmed by it, not shattered by the present or frightened of the future. It could have happened to anyone, but not everyone could have remained unharmed by it. Why see one thing as bad luck and not the other as good luck? Can you really call something bad luck if it doesn't go against how people naturally are? Or do you think something can go against nature's plan if it's not against its wishes? But you know what it wants. Does what happened stop you from being fair, kind, in control, sensible, wise, honest, humble, direct, and all the other things that let a person be themselves? 
Marcus Aurelius doesn't completely dismiss the value of the past. He believed we could learn from it by seeing its pattern, how things repeat, come and go, helping us guess what might happen in the future. In summary, Marcus Aurelius encourages us to see life's challenges not as misfortunes, but as opportunities for growth. It's not about what happens, but how we respond. By maintaining virtues, even in the face of adversity, we embody our true nature. Aurelius also emphasizes learning from the past, recognizing its patterns to anticipate the future. In this way, he offers a timeless philosophy of resilience, optimism, and continual self-improvement. Number three, the present. Marcus Aurelius had this simple yet powerful message about time. No one can lose either the past or the future. How could anyone be deprived of what he does not possess? It is only the present moment of which either stands to be deprived. And if this is all he has, he cannot lose what he does not have. Marcus Aurelius often emphasized the significance of living in the present moment, the only time that truly exists for us. Imagine this moment as a little pocket in time, surrounded by the vast expanse of the past and the unknown future. Even if we successfully release our grip on the past and ease our anxieties about the future, we might still find ourselves overly concerned with things happening right now. It's not uncommon to be dissatisfied with the unfolding of life in these moments. Despite our efforts to let go, we often grapple with discontentment in the present. When things don't go the way we want, it's easy to feel upset, angry, sad, or even depressed. Marcus Aurelius, however, thought getting all worked up about life's surprises is pretty pointless. We might not control how things unfold, but we do control how we react. It's common to feel disturbed when reality doesn't match our expectations. Marcus Aurelius suggested, it's better not to fight against what we can't change. We can't control people's perspectives. We can't shield ourselves from unexpected obstacles and we definitely can't slow down the inevitable aging of our bodies. Similarly, we can't make the world give us what we want. There's no guarantee that the people we like will like us back, and not everyone gets the same opportunities in life. It's just the way things are, but we often waste a ton of time and energy fighting against reality and trying to change things that are beyond our control. We get upset when we can't have what we want and feel down when things don't go our way. It's like being stuck in a tough situation where we suffer because luck doesn't seem to be on our side. On the flip side, sometimes we love the current moment so much that we hold on to it tightly. We're scared of losing what we have, and that fear lets luck take control of our lives. But in the middle of all the chaos around us, which is quick and hard to control, we often miss the important stuff, our own choices, actions, and opinions. Marcus Aurelius thought of nature's rules as our boss. If we try to avoid it or get upset about it, we're just running away and hiding. So let's roll with the flow of nature and deal with it instead of wasting energy getting mad or holding too tight to our situations. Focus on what we have, not what we lack, but with a bit of caution. Picture what you don't have as if it's not even there. Look at the things you really value and think about how much you'd miss them if they disappeared. But be careful not to get so caught up that losing them would be too much to handle. Still, accepting where we're at can be tough especially when life keeps handing us challenges. As we conclude this journey into the profound philosophy of Stoicism through the lens of Marcus Aurelius, we are reminded of the enduring relevance of his teachings. In facing the challenges of our own lives, let us draw inspiration from Marcus Aurelius's wisdom. 
Embrace the tranquility that comes from understanding our limited influence on external events and maintain composure amid the chaos of life. If you found resonance in this journey, I encourage you to show your support by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications. Join our community of like-minded individuals dedicated to the principles of Stoicism. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your insights might just be the inspiration someone needs. Thank you for being part of this transformative experience. Together, let's build a community committed to the Stoic way of life. Until our next exploration, stay resilient, stay Stoic, and may your path be one of purpose and tranquility.